So I'm Alan Gates. I am a um, committer in the Apache H catalog project. I'm also a committer and PMC member in Apache Pig, which you've probably, many of you have probably seen me speak before on behalf of Pig, so now you get to see me again for H catalog. Um, I'm also one of the founders of Hortonworks, which you've already heard a lot about today. And uh, finally, I'm also the author of the upcoming book on uh, Pig, which hopefully you guys have all gotten the coupon to download the ebook there. So today I will be talking about H catalog. So before I kind of dive into exactly what H catalog is here, I want to kind of give you a little motivation. Why should you care? Why is this interesting? And why are we working on this? So today, for people, you know, for groups who use Hadoop intensively, you often have you have a lot of different tools to operate on the data, right? You might have Pig, Hive, MapReduce, Streaming, other, there, you know, there's other tools out there, other ways to access your data. And you may have various file formats, too. You might use RC file, you might use text, you probably have your own custom formats, you might store data in HBase, who knows where all you store data, right? And unfortunately, the result looks like this slide. Every different technology has a different way to access that data. Right? So you end up writing, let's say you use pig, hive, and MapReduce, you're going to end up writing load and store functions, certies, and input and output formats just to talk to um, each of these different, or just to handle all these different types. And each of these tools has a different data model. They have a different notion of schemas. Um, so you kind of end up in these silos. And this is particularly difficult when you want to start sharing data across groups. One group might use pig. You know, the next, uh, the next group down the line uses hive. Now you have to mess with how do you get the data created in pig, loaded into hive, all that kind of stuff. So that is exactly the problem that H catalog sets out to resolve for you. So H catalog is a table manager for Hadoop. It presents a table layer to Hadoop users. So you no longer have to think about your data that you're storing in HDFS as a set of files. You can now think about it as a set of tables. And we have written, or are in the process of writing, uh, tool, uh, interfaces between all the major tools and H catalog so that if you're using PIG, if you're using MapReduce, if you're using Hive, if that data is in H catalog, you don't have to worry about anything below that, right? You just address it as being in a table. H catalog worries about um, what the right storage format is, what, uh, what loader it needs to use, or input format it needs to use to read that, read that data, and all that stuff. Being a, a table layer, it of course also provides schemas and a shared data model and all that with it. And I'll go into more detail on each of those things. So here's a little more motivation. I, I mentioned the, the difficulty of different users having different tools and sharing across that, right? A pattern that we see in Yahoo, and as I talk to some other big users of Hadoop out there, we see the same pattern happening for them is in the back end, in what you might call the data factory, where a lot of the data is prepared, um, we see a lot of use of pig and MapReduce and streaming. Right? This is where you tend to write things like you're building uh, you know, user mo models of your users for, to predict their activity. You're doing ETL to clean the data and all that kind of stuff. And you've got research scientists who want to work on the raw data right when it comes in. They don't want to wait till it gets cleansed and loaded in some kind of warehouse. For those people, they tend to use these, you know, the pig and MapReduce type tools. And then on the... Um, at the end user level, at the analytics level, we see a lot more use of Hive and other um, data warehousing type technologies, right? These are analysts. These are people who want to sit down and write a SQL query and get an answer back. We need a way to share the data between those groups, right? We need a convenient way that as soon as data is done being uh, prepped in PIG or MapReduce, it's available to Hive users. And that's uh, 
and each catalog provides that. So let me give you a little example of how the world looks different for if, you're, if you start using hCatalog. And of course, in my unbiased opinion, PIG is the best tool for this data processing, right? So, so I will do the example in PIG, but this would look um, you know, similar if you did it in MapReduce or something else. So this is a PIG Latin, this little snippet of code here that you see is a PIG Latin script that just loads a file and applies a very simple filter and then, you know, assumably would go on and do a whole lot of other processing. So today, you know, using PIG as is, you just, you have to know the file there that you're going to load. You have to know the loader, the appropriate load function to use if this isn't, you know, just text or some other very standard format. And you have to declare the schema. Right? You have to know ahead of time this is the schema. And you know, for just so you could f I could fit it on the page, I put only three fields in that schema. But realistically, of course, your data generally has way more than three fields, right? So this is um, so realistically, this clause of declaring your schema can get very long, and it's brittle when the data changes underneath you. And then the same for the store function, right? And then finally, how do you even know when you can run this Pig Latin script, right? How do I know when that raw events data is ready? And how do I tell my users when, I've, when I'm done processing it, right? And furthermore, how do I even know what that schema is, right? I have to declare that schema there, and this is the same in MapReduce. You would have to know what the data is. You know, it's probably written on some tweaky page somewhere. That's at least what, it, what we do at Yahoo, and it, you know, that, I can just say that doesn't work out real well, right? So, with the addition of H catalog, it looks like this. So now, instead of telling Pig you're going to load this file, you just give it a table name. And then we've named this table raw events. And you as a user are no longer worried about where that's stored. So that's wonderful for your admins, right? Because if suddenly whatever directory they were storing it in, they decide for some reason they need to reorganize it, they don't even have to tell you. You don't have to change your script. It's all handled underneath, right? You don't have to worry about what the load format is. You just tell it, use hcatalog to load this. That's what hcat loader there says. And then um, however it's stored, your loader will work. And this is particularly useful because one thing we found at Yahoo over time is how we store the data goes through a progression, right? We end up using one load format or one storage format for a period of time, and then pretty soon, we discover something better and we want to move to that. But when you've got thousands of users all storing their data and you suddenly tell them, hey, guess what? Tomorrow we're going to store your data differently and you have to rewrite every Pig Latin script and every MapReduce job and you have to retest it, that's a great way to make your users hate you. And yes, that is the voice of experience. Um, so now you can just store it and you just use this H catalog loader. Nobody has to worry about it. Um, and then in the next line now, you'll notice the filter ch has changed a little bit because you have to now tell it, don't load the whole table, just load this partition. So I'm assuming that the table in this particular example is partitioned by date. So you can give it that date and then still apply the rest of your filter. And the appropriate parts of that filter will be pulled out and applied as part of the um, scanning the table so that only the appropriate partitions are scanned. And then the same, the storage changes in the same way where you're storing into a table and uh, just give, telling the table what partition you're going to write there. And hCatalog can then, or will soon in version 0.2, be able to notify interested users that your data is now available. They don't have to sit and poll on HDFS and wonder when, you know, is the data ready, is the data ready. They can, um, they can be notified actively by hCatalog. So let's take a little look at the architecture here, how this is built. Um, we did, we used the Hive metadata store for this. So much of this project is tight, or actually this entire project is tightly integrated with Hive. Um, the sections here in this slide in yellow and green are what H is a part of what hCatalog is adding. So we've added load and store functions for pig, input and output formats for MapReduce. We are in the process of adding a notification service, and this notification will be uses JMS. So, um, you know, whatever JMS system you have, you can connect to this. Um, 
Now, this particular slide makes it kind of look like, wow, you wrote an input and output format and you called it a project. Um, and it is much more in-depth than that. We've actually been working very closely with the Hive team and making a number of um, contributions to Hive along the way to help enable this. Um, and then also, let's look at the, on the, the other half of things, how do we read these um, different storage formats? So I've made several references to um, the fact that now you don't care about how data is stored or compressed or serialized or any of those things. So the way that we accomplish that is we provide, um, HCatalog has this input storage driver and output storage driver interfaces. So now, if you're an HCatalog user and you do decide to switch from you know, one storage form, say you used to use text and you decide tomorrow you come up with a much better um, storage format for your data. Now, if it's a standard storage format, say RC file or something like that, we hopefully those will already be there. In fact, we do support RC file today. Um, and as we will support other standard formats as well. But let's say you come up with a great new format, or somebody else comes up with a great new storage format, and you say, I want to use that. What, what needs to happen to you, for you to add that in? All you need to write are these input storage drivers and output storage drivers for that new format. And then all your data tools can access this data. And those, those are pretty thin layers. All they have to do is tell HCAT input format and HCAT output format how to convert between the key value pairs that is um, that your storage driver, uh, or sorry, your input format produces. How do you take that and you turn it into an HCAT record? And an HCAT record is just a you know a row-oriented row record. Looks like a record in Hive or a um, or a tuple in Pig. All right. So those are it's very easy to add. And as I show in this picture right now. We work mo uh, only with stuff on HDFS. We want to extend that in the near future to working with HBase as well. And there's no reason there couldn't be any, any other types of storage formats under there. Right? So we uh, very purposefully want to keep it uh, the actual storage type independent. Right? You can store your data however you want. OK, so where are we at in all this? Um, so HCatalog is an Apache incubator project. Um, starting last March, we were actually working on it uh, for a while previous to that at Yahoo. We just uh, got it all open sourced in Apache in March. Um, now, it turns out, I, I say on this slide, 0 0.1 was released this month. It turns out I was a little optimistic there. I had to write the slides a few weeks ago, and we had a release candidate, and I thought all was good. And then we discovered that I built the release candidate all wrong. So. <laughs> Um, so there is, um, 0 0.1 is about ready for release. There's a, a couple last minute fixes we have to throw in there, but it, it is almost there. Um, so in 0 0.1, you can read and write from pig. There are, there's uh, load and store functions for pig. There are input and output formats for MapReduce. It works with MapReduce. It works with Hive as long as you're using RC file. We haven't written a general certy for it yet. It only works when you're using the RC file uh, format that Hive uses. So there's some work there to do. Um, 0 0.1 works with secure versions of Hadoop, so 0 0.2203. Um, and uh, it supports RC file and text. And I actually think the text part is not quite true. But I, it definitely supports RC file for storage drivers. Um, so what, what's our roadmap? What's our future plan? So 0 0.2, which uh, we are actually wrapping up development on uh, in the, this week, I believe, or maybe next week, we are adding the notification service that I talked, to, or talked about to uh, via JMS. Now, initially, at Yahoo anyway, we've been working toward integrating this with Uzi so that Uzi can start its workflows as soon as data is available. Uh, there's nothing. Um, Designed in this, it's Uzi specific. You could hook it up to anything that can you know, listen on a JMS interface and then start its job. Uh, we want to make it so that you can store to multiple partitions simultaneous, simultaneously. In version 01, you can only store to one partition at a time. And then we're adding import and export tools to be able to pull data out of HCatalog, transfer it to 
different grids and different H catalog instances or just to pull it out and use it yourself. Um, later in this year, we want to add HBase as a storage mechanism. We want to integrate this with Hadoop streaming. So right now, it just works with Pig, Hive, and MapReduce. We'd like to make it work for streaming users as well. We need to add a byte array slash blob type. The, um, H catalog just adopted Hive's type model, and Hive doesn't currently support a blob type, so we want to add that. Uh, we want to comp improve compression in RC files so we can start to get uh, even better compression out of that. And we want to make this whole thing high availability. So this, uh, since it use, uses Hive's Metastore, it has a thrift server in it to serve uh, metadata requests. And that is not cur there's not currently a simple way to make that highly available because there is some, uh, some information that is, you know, there's some places it keeps state, in particular when it uses security. So we, we need to separate that out so that we, you can put multiple thrift servers there and it will all work. Um, it also obviously has a relational database at its core since it's using Hive's Metastore and that's how it works. But we figure there's already lots of ways to make uh, databases highly available, so we're not working on that quite yet. And then eventually, we would like to add uh, data management type APIs to it. So uh, we don't see H Catalog itself moving into the business of doing cleaning or archiving of data, those kinds of things. But we'd like it to provide the API so that those tools can connect to it and do their work. And uh, we'd also like to add uh, the statistic storage. And Hive, the Hive team is also working on this, so we hope to collaborate with them on that. Um, let's see. So as I said before, uh, HCatalog is, um, is out there in Apache. So we would encourage you guys to get involved. There's, here's our website and the mailing list. And we uh, welcome any new contributions. And with that, I move to the questions section. So any questions? So, uh, hello. So you mentioned that uh, with Edge Catalog, uh, if, you, if let's say someone changes the data storage format, right? So uh, he can transparently, I mean, change the catalog entry and the input format all will work out well. Does that work with the backward compatibility aspect as well, like older data process with the older data? Yeah, OK, good. So I, I didn't delve too much into that. But so what H catalog actually does is it stores enough information about each partition to know how to read that partition. So if, say, I'm, I have a f data source that I'm storing every day, and I'm storing it in, in say, RC file, and then tomorrow I decide somebody invents you know, the great new unicorn storage format, and I switch to unicorn. It will not go restate the old data. It will just remember that it uses our C file. And then as you write each new partition, it will note that, OK, that's stored in this new unicorn format. right? And then when you go to read the data, it actually handles the fact that they're in different, H catalog handles the fact that they're in different formats and just reads, reads them both in and, and handles that and does the anything it needs to do to make that work. So there's no need to go restate old data. and it's just all new data will be automatically written in the new format. And uh, is using um, a Hive a prerequisite for using uh, Edge Catalog? Like no, you certainly don't need to be a Hive user, right? I mean, um, we do use Hive at Yahoo, but we don't use it extensively yet. And we plan to be using Edge Catalog all over the place in places we won't be using Hive. So it's certainly built to allow collaboration across those tools, but you could be a each catalog user and not be a Hive user. Um, what's your story about JDBC integration? Um, well, we don't. JDBC is kind of really at the Hive or Pig level, right? So H catalog is something for tools like Hive and Pig to use to connect to um, the, the storage layer. But JDBC is the next level up of how you talk to, say, Pig or Hive. So at those, so at that, in that sense, we don't really care about JDBC. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And how does it play with the Hive views right now? 
Um, so at this point, it, we don't support views in H catalog. Um, that's not to say we won't someday, because they're, you know, obviously they're very useful for a number of things, but we don't really have that on the roadmap yet. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, I think I'm. Oops, sorry. I'm maybe I'm. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Yeah. Over. Okay. Um, that all sounds great. Thanks. Thanks for all that. Um, do you know if there's any plans to integrate with Scoop, the Scoop project, which is now Apache? The Scoop? Yeah. Um, so if. So how it, as far as when Scoop loaded the data, it would automatically end up in H, or in, sorry, in H catalog? Yeah, or Scoop can pull out of H catalog and put into a Scoop spa directional, right? Um, so I've had very informal conversations with them about it, and I think everyone says, yeah, that'd be a great idea. Um, so far, none of the people using H catalog are also happen to be Scoop users, so I don't think any of us on the HCAT team have pursued that. Um, I don't know if people, you know, the Scoop community wants to, to build that connector, but it would certainly make sense, and we would certainly be open to doing it. Okay. Well, I'll push them. So with um, the user-written storage drivers, how, how does, do, do we have to get our admin teams to install those storage drivers for us, or do we just register them through an interface, or how does that work? Um, so for the moment, they ha you have to bring them along as a jar in your, um, when you install it, you would probably do it as part of the f however you install on your gateways or access machines or whatever, and that just has to be in your class path when you run. That's obviously not an ideal answer. The answer you'd like to hear is you, you know, your admin registers it once and it lives somewhere in the cluster and you just get it all downloaded for you. A and I think we agree that's an eventual great, you know, eventually that would be nice, but we're not there yet. So currently, do you just, when you're creating a table, do you just give like a class name to your storage? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Hive allows you to, so one thing I didn't say in there is the, um, the API is just all, um, is just Hive's command line interface, right, from, from the end user viewpoint, when you're saying create table or whatever like that. And Hive allows you to give, uh, a set of key value pairs associated with the table. So one of the things you just say is, this is my input uh, storage driver, and this is my output storage driver along with this table. Hey, Alan, great work. Uh, any plans to add the ability to store data statistics in each catalog? Yes, we do want to add stats. So stats really kind of falls into two categories, right? There's, there's very small kind of, you might call it partition level statistics, like row count and some of that stuff. That, clearly, we'd want to store in the metadata store as it is today. And Hive already enables some of that, right? The next level is you'd like to be able to store kind of summary statistics, like give me a histogram of, the key, of a key in this table or something. That's going to be really hard to store inside the, um, inside the meta store itself. So then the question is, should, should those things go in HBase? Should they go in HDFS? Where exactly do those live? And we want to answer that in conjunction with the Hive community and whatever, you know, hopefully we'll uh, work together on that, come up with a way to put all that behind one interface so that you as a user don't actually know where we choose to store it. But we do want to make all that available through the interfaces and to tools like Hive and Pig so they can make better optimization decisions. Thank you. Hey, Jan. Hey. Uh, so two questions. The first one being an actual HCAT question. Watches on creation of new partitions uh, and all of that sort of thing. Is that uh, in the plans? Is that done? Is that going to go through Zoom? So the something? notification work for new partitions will be available in 0 0.2, which I hope will be out in July or August. Um, and in addition to that, in 0 0.2, you will be able to not just say, I want to watch when a new partition is added, but when a new set of partitions is added, like when all the partitions from today have been added. Then, um, then give me notification. Awesome. And then the second question is, it's great. Something like H catalog is awesome for interoperability for reading the data. Uh, the next obvious step is interoperability for UDFs, uh, because right now, if you're using Pig and you're using Hive, you're writing the same code twice. Right. So the question is, or is the question, rather, are we going to create some kind of shim layer so a UDF can go across Hive and Pig? Yeah, that'd be cool. So we haven't investigated that yet. I mean, 
in my dreams, I would like that to be the next step. But I'm just one voice in that, right? I don't know what the rest of the pig and hive community think about that. So, um, and I'm not even 100% sure whether that belongs in H catalog or whether that belongs in pig and hive. I don't know quite how that falls. But as a pig contributor or committer, I definitely feel like that's a place we need to go. So I have a question. Sure. So it's related to what type of security is supported by edge catalog metadata, and is it related to the actual security for the data itself? So if I have permissions to read the metadata. Sure. So I didn't talk well? about how security works. So it is, I, I said it works with secure Hadoop. Um, the metadata in edge catalog itself is secure as well. What we have done initially is just based that off the HDFS um, permission. So if you have permission to read the data, you have permission to read the metadata. If you have permission to write the data, then you have permission to um, create new partitions, create new tables, that kind of thing. Um, we need to extend that a little bit so that it works with other storage formats. That's one of the um, th work, one piece of work we need to do to work with HBase is we want to extend it so that whatever the underlying security is, then we just mimic that. But we want to keep that model where we mimic the underlying storage security because, um, we, well, one, it, we feel like it doesn't make any sense if we don't, right? If we say, well, we won't let you get it through HCAT, but you can just go right underneath and get it from HDFS, that doesn't, we haven't accomplished anything. And um, plus it allows, you know, that way we as HCatalog don't have to write our whole own big security model. We rely on whatever your underlying storage is.